Okay, so it is Friday night. I spent most of the day getting this Farmer Tech 466 uh, put together. Timing numbers are 117 on the transfers, uh, 79 intake, and 94 on the exhaust roof. So if you saw my little picture post that's on, I guess, my community tab on my page, you've seen that the combustion chamber or the squish band is really wide. Uh, so I knew that the compression was going to be pretty high with this 660 piston. Uh, so I raised the exhaust roof and the transfers up more and then, you know, polished and made sure they're, you know, perfect, open all at the same time. Um, my little, little block that I have for that little 3D pointed block, I'll show that at some point. Maybe I want to do the 064 build, uh, I'll show that piece of it. But, uh, so I got it all put together, everything ready to go. I uh, got a chain, I sharpened a chain up for it here i just touch up this chain uh, so that i have good sharp chain to test with uh, and then i went to start it i started it one time actually i start i tried to start it twice I, start, I successfully started it one time with the stock recoil here and i'll just pull it out so you can see that the cord is frayed see how it's frayed there so it only it only lasted maybe two or three pulls and on the fourth pull, or I guess maybe maybe five or six pulls total, I uh, started on like four or five pulls uh, initially. And then once I went to start it again, I uh, broke the recoil. So I threw this uh, OEM recoil on here off of my 044 10 millimeter. And we can see that that one is also broke. So I think I need to pull this uh, decomp plug out and throw a my little Husqvarna decomp in there. I'm using the Husqvarna decomp because it's got a little bit bigger holes than what from others have said is that the Husqvarna decomp handles the higher compression better. So I think that a decomp is going to be necessary on this build. It's not extremely difficult to pull over. I, I personally, I think my 500 I is, is harder to pull over. Like you got to have more, uh, more momentum. You can't just like, you know, when it's cold, uh, when it's warm, it starts nice and easy, but when it's cold, you have to, you know, have a good grip on that handle so that the saw doesn't rotate and you got to, you know, pull it past top dead center and then, you know, pull it over. So you get a, you know, full momentum of the crankshaft. So, um, it doesn't feel any more difficult than the 500 I one, but the 500 I does have this elasto start. So I think that's what keeps this recoil alive on this one. So I don't know. I know that the, the elasto starts are like three or thirty dollars, thirty thirty five dollars. I don't know if I want to spend that kind of money on this because I my the, my my theme with this build is spend as little money as possible. This is the cage off my eight eighty. This is the bark box that's for my o forty four four forty or I guess my four forty hybrid. It'll go on all of them. Uh, side cover goes between the o sixty four four forty and o forty four. Uh, so I'm trying to keep the, uh, the cost of this build as little as possible. It does have the farmer tech 54 millimeter big bore cylinder on it. Uh, 660 meteor piston OEM still tapered wrist pin in it to lighten it up a little bit. Uh, I can show you the weights real quick while we're talking for those that want to know. Trying to keep this video short, but I'll just kind of show you this real quick. So the weight of the piston, uh, 460 OEM piston, 82.9 grams. The Farmer Tech Big Bore 54 millimeter uh, is 85.2. So that's the piston that comes with it. The Meteor 660 is 97.7 grams. The Farmer Tech wrist pin is 16 grams. That's not a tapered pin. And the still tapered pin is 13.2. And just the total weight comparison of the, the stock one, the one that came with the saw. Well, we're just going to use the OEM piston because I just weighed that one because the other one had oil and stuff on it. And I'm never going to use that anyways. So that's 98.9 with that six uh, that non-tapered pin. And then the new build is 110.9. I did take a little bit of material off the piston to lighten it up a little bit, but probably no more than a gram. So... This one is 12% heavier, or I guess, no, 11% heavier, 
and 12 grams heavier total. It doesn't have as much vibration as that 044 or 440 hybrid. I keep saying 044, but it doesn't have as much uh, vibration when I ran it for like the two minutes that I ran it for, just for initial heat cycle. Um, so the vibration is not so bad, um, but it is a little bit heavier. I'm sure that the lighter the piston is, the smoother that it runs. I know that for a fact. So yeah, so I widened the exhaust pretty much as wide as I could go. I went with this flat of roof as possible, then, then checked it with the cylinder and the rings on it just to make sure that it was smooth. You know, it rolling over was smooth since I went pretty flat with the exhaust roof. Um, and then I went basically as far as I could go as far as the width, only about 50 thousandths from the edge of the port to the edge of the skirt so that it has a good seal, but it's as wide as possible on that. Um, Intake, I left the intake size alone. I didn't do any uh, Mickey Mouse shape on it or any long style intake on it. I just uh, lowered the floor of it to get the intake duration that I wanted. Um, so I try to keep that intake kind of small just for this initial like test run here. Um, may need to take some material out of the chamber if it gets too hot. I mean, I'm planning to cut firewood with it. So that's kind of Hard on saws, you build a lot of heat when you're going cut after cut after cut. Um, but my 440 runs good, so we'll see how this one runs. So tomorrow I'll throw that Husqvarna decomp in there, redo the cord wire, or yeah, redo the recoil cord, and I guess I'll be doing some cutting tomorrow. Then I'll probably post the video uh, Sunday. I have to edit it up Saturday night, and I'll post that Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.